Hey everybody, Jeff Slakey from the Alderbrook Resort for the Affordable Workforce Housing Summit put on by Peninsula Credit Union and other great organizations throughout Mason County. Sitting now with Dr. Randy Rowland, the Seattle Seahawks public address announcer and Husky marching band announcer. Hi Randy, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Jeff, for having me a part of it today. It's great to be with you on uh, the, your set of stations now. been following you guys for years. It's been uh, really fun hearing uh, as I talk to people throughout the day about community keeps coming up as uh, a main sticking point about how we can work towards these goals of affordable workforce housing. You have got a couple unique communities that you're a part of with the Seahawks and the Huskies. Tell us a little bit about the power of community. Well, when I think of community, it's the fact that not only are we better together, just playing better together, we're more together. And there, there's an old children's story called Stone Soup that I really love, where uh, an army's marching through a town and the town says we have no food and the army's starving. And uh, one of the soldiers got an idea, I think it was, and he, he put a pot full of water and he said, well then let's make stone soup. And he put the pot on the uh, fire and he goes, I've got these special stones I'm gonna put in, he threw the stones in. And the people from the committee were, hmm, well maybe stone soup's really good. And, Come to think of it, I got some asparagus, I got some carrots, and oh, I have a little meat left over. And everybody in the community brings a little thing and puts in this sort of a ancient paella or mixed food, and, and there's this big stew that's for the whole community. Nobody had everything, anything, but everybody gave a little bit, and it turned into a feast. And to me, that's an image of what community's like and how we can support each other and be both better together and more together. Let's talk about the power of community in unsuspecting areas of the community. Where have you seen in your travels and times of unsuspecting powers, uh, pockets of power in community? Yeah. Well, I, I like to call those, you know, seeing signs of hope. And let me tell you a real, a real life story. Um, I've happened to work in the church many years. I was a broadcaster and I became a pastor. And uh, in the neighborhood that my church is in, we also have a coffee shop. Well, about three years ago now, a gas main that ran through Greenwood, up Greenwood Avenue, began leaking. Somebody smelled it around midnight. They began abandoning houses, the police and fire department there. And that thing blew, and I mean it blew. Four by eight sheets of plywood, 30 feet in the air, stuck in trees. It was a, it was a horrific blast and just broke windows for blocks around. And we'd had arson fires a few years before that. And the community chipped in. And about three quarters of a million dollars came in from individual people given for lost wages and any what deductibles that the small businesses might not be able to afford. And then some of the business owners were actually awarded grants for loss of business. But the community snapped together and all that money and people actually out sweeping the streets, putting blocks of uh, plywood up over broken windows. And then some street artists came and they painted all the plywood windows so the neighborhood, neighborhood looked kind of cool during the repair process. And when that was finally done, they took down those pieces of plywood and framed them and sold them as art. Wow. And that went back into the community as well. That's powerful, right? Yeah. Because a few people band together and they take away a lot of misery and a lot of sorrow and bring joy where there was sadness. How can you beat that? Let's talk about the foundations of a good community. What does it take uh, to, to build up a great community? You know, this is going to sound really stupid. It all starts with, hi, my name is Randy. Okay. You put out your hand and you meet somebody and you make an effort to know their name. And the next thing you do, instead of saying, what do you do for a living, which is kind of routine, you say, tell me a little bit about yourself and let them tell you what they want you to know rather than some mundane question. Well, as you get to know people, you band together. And that's, uh, that's what I see in communities that thrive is people get to know each other and, and they dream together. So in the Greenwood community where I'm at in Seattle, we have a, a drive in the fall on what would be Halloween time, a harvest festival, and kids get food and whatnot. We have churches banded together and supplying lunches to kids who, who need food and, and food packaging and backpacks that last a weekend. Mm -hmm. um, we have people assisting people getting into house housing. We have a low housing institute. Those are the kind of things that emerge from a handshake. 
and hearing what somebody's passionate about and then saying to you, hey, listen, come along. And, and so I, th- I think it's as, it's as simple as that. And the thing we miss in America is we pull into our house with the electric garage door opener, we shut the door, and we stay there, right? And we're really busy, so we get a troubled night's sleep, and we run off to work, and we run back. And it seems like sometimes we don't hardly have time to shake the people in our own family or our housemates' hand. Um, and I think just taking a little extra time to be with each other. We call them third places, you know, developing third places in communities. And that used to traditionally be drinking places, but now we have coffee shops and we have uh, community centers and senior centers, and those are wonderful third places. And because it doesn't involve partying and a lot of noise, people do have the opportunity to get to know each other and learn about different things like aging and self-care and what it takes to be a surrogate grandparent to young kids in the neighborhood. Those are fun, fun things to do. And people find that, you, that if they give themselves away, it's way more rewarding than protecting themselves and resting and cloistering up. You just got to get people to take the risks to do that. It's risky, but it's a good risk. I want to talk a little bit about your time. You work uh, with the Seahawks, the public address announcer. You see people come in every year, uh, varied different backgrounds. Uh, But at the end of the season, they have all worked towards a common goal. How are those uh, goals put forth to the folks from different backgrounds? And and how does everybody get kind of that buy-in that we always hear so much about? Let me tell you a story. Pete Carroll and I have got... you know, he's a very, very popular, wonderful man. A lot of people know him, so I'm not going to make any claim to knowing him well. But we've had some chats. And in one chat, he said, Randy, you're a theologian. What's your theology of personal development, human development? We talked for a second, and I didn't know how much he wanted to hear. And he nodded and nodded, and he goes, here's mine. And it was very interesting. He said, we bring a player in. We find out who they are. We say, who are you? what's important to you? And then we say, what kind of a football player do you want to be? And then we tell them, this is why we drafted you and brought you in. And then with that player and with myself and with their specific position coach and the athletic performance people, we develop a vision for their life and for their career as a football player, particularly as it pertains to the Seattle Seahawks. And then really our job is to remind them who they are every day, every hour. You know, you told us this and we believe this and we believe this about you. That's who you are. So it's not a scolding environment. It's not a, it's not a torch, you know, on the tail feathers making people scream and run forward and do insane stuff. It's a deep, deep reminder that there's something in your identity that's made you a football player for this time and this season, and we believe that in you. And accountability is really just reminding you who you are and calling that out and reminding who, who you are together. And uh, in the couple of years we went to the Super Bowl and, and won that first one, um, the guys had a LOB band on, and, and one of the players gave me one. And I said, well, I'm not in the Legion of Boom. What do you, you give me an LOB band for? Is it a Legion of Boom thing? He goes, no, no. We co-opted that name because we didn't want just four guys in the defensive backfield to be it. This thing is love our brothers. And Coach Carroll gave them out to everybody. And you're part of the team. You announced for us. So here's one for you. And, you know, we're going to flourish and be better when we love each other. And what's love? It's knowing someone and seeking their highest good, uh, seeking for them to become all they were meant to be. When it comes to um, taking kind of the mantra of the Coach Carroll, the excitement, the passion that you see uh, from him on the field and off the field, what are some things you've learned from him, your time in the Seahawks with the Huskies as well, uh, that you could impart on other city leaders or other community leaders, ways to encourage and excite the community base? Yeah. Uh, can I, let me take a risk here to summarize that. Stop treating people as objects that are here in the world to do your bidding and instead uh, appreciate people for the value of who they are, what they bring, what their gifts and what their passions are, and draw that out in them and, and then be willing to embrace that along with what you want to see happen. The thing that makes 
Coach Peterson with the Huskies and Coach Carroll with the Seahawks and so many other professional business leaders, Bill Gates when he was at Microsoft, so good as he could bring in all these wacky people, managing them is like herding cats. You know some of the personalities we've had around the Seahawks? Pete's genius is let them be who they are. If Richard Sherman's going to get really loud, let him get loud. He's just kind of sparky. You know, if Michael Bennett is going to be about justice issues, let him speak to that. That's an important issue and embrace him, right? And so the, you know, and those guys, believe me, were not easy people, but they made tremendous contributions to the, to the overall identity and culture of the Seahawks that is then helped them this year to attend a tech season, even though those guys are a year gone. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's the key is instead of running the world as if it revolves around us to be other centered and accept the unique contribution that people have, especially as our culture becomes more diverse in, in terms of even somebody moves from the deep south from Alabama to Shelton, they're, they're, they come from a different culture. They have different ideas on what on exactly how family and holidays run. Well. Throw your arms around them and listen to them. Let them be a part of the party from the very beginning and, and help shape a unique new culture for Mason County. Dr. Randy Rowland is a Seattle Seahawks public address announcer and Husky marching band announcer. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure, and I hope you guys have a wonderful and prosperous and successful 2019. You too. Thank you. <laughs>